thank you again and and welcome everyone um you know we are so happy that you joined us today and this is our latest webinar we're talking about um, a field guide for beer wine and spirits my name is jill kennedy and i'm your host for this uh, what we'll call a happy half hour and i've been with navator for about 15 years now working with the sales and marketing teams and helping bring forward industry information and sales materials that help you grow your print sales and that's exactly what we're doing today as we focus on the beverage industry, specifically that the beer, wine and spirits. Uh, we'll be breaking this down into three different segments that are important to the industry, the labels and packaging, uh, beverage service and, of course, point of purchase. So we'll be sharing some industry facts and trends. Um, we do the research so you don't have to and we'll give you the top products to pitch so you can get started right away um, i know how busy you all are and i know how tempting it is to multitask but i encourage you to give these next 30 minutes your full attention take some notes even maybe grab a coffee if you throw a little baileys in we're not going to say anything you know i mean it's industry research right <laughs> it'll be time well spent if you do get pulled away though no worries we'll be recording the session and we will be emailing you a link to that full recording later today so please use that chat and the Q&A functions to comment, ask questions as we go. We do have Stephanie with us here today. She'll be monitoring the chats for us. Thank you, Stephanie. And um, I, I, like I said, too, if you have some experiences of your own you wanna share with others, pop them in there, pop them in that Q&A so everyone can see, we're, we're happy to do that. But um, before we get started though, I did pop up that poll um, to get an idea of where you stand into selling into the beer and wine spirits industry. So let's take a look here. I'm gonna end that poll and we'll share the results and see where everybody's at. So yeah, it looks like everybody's pretty much for the most part newbies here. So just getting started, um, haven't started at all yet. And that's why you're here. We have a few people that say you do it all the time. So I'm expecting to have some good um, comments from you all and some, some suggestions too. So please share your knowledge as well. We appreciate that. Okay, well, let's get going here. So, but before we stir things up, I do want to introduce uh, my fellow presenters. Uh, we have first, we have Sadie Whiting, who has been with us for, I guess it's 19 years now, almost 20, right, Sadie? I know it. I can't believe it. I always say, I'm going to say it again. I always say it, but I started here when I was two years old. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Going on 20 years in February. So it's, that, it's oh my God. And I'm still learning something every day. So I'm excited to see what the rest of this session has. And, and we always, it's a great, great time. So Look yeah, and it's great. We, we're sharing our, our favorite drinks here today. And, and uh, Sadie's is the sparkling cranberry mocktail. Such a pretty drink, right? <laughs> pretty drink and a fancy name for a Sprite and cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> it awesome. sounds so, sounds so, so sophisticated, I guess. <laughs> it is. It's good. <laughs> Thanks, Sadie. So then next we have Stephen Bartz, who has 16 years of experience. He's got a little bit on me there um, and uh, loves his angry orchard green apple. We we're talking about the fall weather. So that's a perfect one for these fall days, isn't it, Stephen? Yeah, I'm a sucker for any type of seasonal beverage. And that's it for this year. I'm kind of the newbie here with Navator, but still the 16 years of industry experience. So yeah. excited to be part here. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. So let's distill the facts a little bit. The alcoholic beverage industry um, includes the manufacturing, the distribution, and sales. Everything from those small brewers and big name brands to major retailers and even your neighborhood bar and liquor store are included. I know we all have them in our area. Uh, in the U.S. alone, that industry creates over 2 million jobs. And during the pandemic, off-sale alcohol businesses were actually considered essential. And they saw an explosion in business during that time. Uh, now, the industry is expected to grow 4% over the next five years. Uh, with their explosive popularity, craft spirit sales are actually soaring with an expected compound annual, annual growth rate of 22%. And if those current trends that we're seeing continue, smaller brands will earn more of that market share as consumers gravitate towards those premium options. And there's a lot of them. I mean, just look around. Look at all the celebrities really taking a sip of that market just to capture a piece, a piece of all of it. Another interesting trend is that move to moderation, which seems counterintuitive, but it's we're seeing it in the younger generations. Actually, many are observing sober October right now. Uh, Gen Zers are leading this trend with their healthier living in mind. You'd think this would mean a decrease in revenue, but that's really not proving to be the case. So this segment of the population is more about maybe just smaller portion sizes, but also they want really high quality product. 
companies are actually leaning into the needs of the sober curious by, promote, by providing and promoting non-alcoholic options uh, and pre-made mocktails, similar to what, to what Sadie enjoys. All of this translates though into revenue growth overall. So as we prepared for this webinar, we did have the opportunity to chat with one of our local brewers, uh, which is actually one of the oldest breweries in the country. So we do trust their strategies and their experience, and we asked them how print adds to their marketing equation. Now, hearing directly from an industry veteran is really a great place to start this conversation and set, the, and set that stage for what's to come. So asking questions about who your prospect works with for advertising and promo may lead you to additional opportunities. Like in this case, who is the ad agency? Perhaps you can work with them as well as the brewer directly. Uh, remember to stay competitive and relevant. Businesses in this industry are continually evolving and developing new products. So that equals to more opportunities for you. Every time they have a new flavor, every time they have a new promotion, that just means more revenue and more revenue. Advertising um, isn't limited to just the manufacturing and the distribution efforts. Many types of materials are needed to spread their brand awareness. The idea of sharing a marketing expense, which is a great one, opens the door for a higher spend on promotions and marketing efforts that a single business alone may not be willing to front. And you can see this either from manufacturer side with the distributor or a retail location or even um, a service industry, a restaurant and so on. So this example I found a little bit interesting and it's a little counterintuitive as well. So we often rush to branded samples with our customers, but in this industry, especially those brands and those logos that they are so creative about are really an integral part of their identity. So it may be best to ask for permission before showing up with some branded spec samples. You really could risk offending them if you show up with something branded. So just a little, little food for thought there. And although this really is just one business, there are some good insights here to consider as we move on to the rest of our presentation. So I'll turn it over to Sadie, who will create a stir with some labels and packaging. Go ahead, Sadie. Thanks, Jill. Yeah, I think all that, that you know, direct from her, those quotes and those ideas, I mean, it's just amazing. And it really, I guess, just boils down to getting to know your customer mm -hmm. best and knowing what they like. So that that's really neat. I love that, hearing that. Yeah. So really quick, speaking along that line, let's talk about before we dive into ideas, let's look at who, who should you be approaching? What types of places? So Jill had mentioned already several, you know, as far as looking around where you are locally, um, that's going to include places like breweries, wineries, you know, co-packers is something people will need someone to, to pack their product or, or to do things along that line. So you're going to want to look for places like that because they often are going to be looking for someone to actually do the printing part of it. And then also, of course, retail environments, um, places like farmers markets. Another one that I always suggest is also if you don't already have like a graphic designer in your company, look to maybe find one locally and partner with them. Because what happens is, you know, if I'm someone that is an end, end customer and I am with a brewery, I'm going to go to a, a graphic designer to help design my label. But then I'm going to say, hey, can you help me print this? Or I'm going to go to them and say, hey, can you help print this flyer or this, this promotional piece? And then the graphic designer can refer them to you. So that's just something that if you don't already have your own internal in-house graphic designer, go ahead and, and try and really make that relationship locally with other graphic designers that can give you that connection. And then as Jill mentioned, you know, the whole non-alcoholic realm is a whole nother opportunity there. So just keep that in mind. Don't just, you know, think strictly just the alcoholic products, but also the non-alcoholic that are really, really expanding right now. So a couple ideas that we want to share are something that you want to look at is think about labels and packaging. So we know that really the whole mindset behind this industry is to catch the eye of the consumer with any brand, of course, you know, you've got a, sp a specific target industry, you're, you're trying to really market to them and to grab their attention and to promote your brand, catch that purchase and really get them to buy. So labels and packaging are going to be two key things that are going to help in that labels and folded cartons, things like that, they can help create a high-end look. Um, I've got here a label today, I was gonna show you. You may or may not be able to see this on the screen. Yeah, you can, look at that. So this is a way of how you can actually create a really high-end elegant look. This is a silver label. And so we just print the ink and wherever that ink does not have white behind it, then it creates that shine. So things along that line, or if you're looking at folded cartons, you can do things such as foil stamping, you know, your spot glosses, your blind embossing, soft touch coatings, 
all of that is going to play into that whole goal of grabbing that consumer's attention. We can help with things like straight touch tuck boxes, roll tuck boxes, you know, your display cases as shown in that middle picture there, and then also belly bands as well. Something else we wanna make sure that you're aware of is we also can help you with flexible pouches and shrink sleeves, both of which are very hot items for this particular market. You know, you're gonna be thinking about, like as Joe had mentioned, a lot of the smaller size items that they're wanting, you know, that this, the, the people that are out buying this and really trying to target are wanting things that are small, single serve, like a mix-in type product. This here is a great option for that. This is a lay flat pouch and it's just a single serve size. So that's another great idea for you on that, as well as shrink sleeves, which we can print all the way around. That way you have that full coverage for your customer. And then also prime labels is another option. Prime labels, what does that mean? That is just simply a product label. It's basically a label that's really there to relay the brand that's going to make it stand out. When it's in, a say, a retail environment, it's going to make that stand out. Things such as watermarks, as mentioned here, the gradients, hyper-customization, which what that is, is every single label can have something unique about it. You're taking that one piece of artwork and just changing a little aspect of it. And we have the design program to be able to do that. We also offer wet strength materials such as what I'm showing here on the screen. This is in the state nine and we also have eight and nine. These are basically, what does wet strength mean? That just means it can withstand water and moisture. So it can be submerged without that worry of breaking down. We also can do free form, what we call free form, which is laser cutting, unique shapes and sizes. These are gonna be great for things, making something more exclusive to your brand, something unique like a product label or a neck label, or even displaying a, a nutritional fact in a fun way, such as you see here. So all of those, think about retail environments outside of just the product. Think also outside of retail environments, things like coupon labels, window decals, shipping labels, cooler doors, all of that whole environment. And then also, as was mentioned in the quote on the, on the previous discussion we had talked about with that end customer, uh, things like seasonal varieties and special editions, those all need low quantities. You want to be able to offer that to your client. We can help with that. So that's something that you don't have to worry about this super high minimum. So that's something wonderful there. And then let's look at how in the world do you help them increase their brand trust, which is so key these days. People like to know the brand that they're, that they're working with or that they're buying is going to be a good brand, that it also is a product that is safe, that it's something that has not been tampered with. So tamper evident labels, that's going to be something you can share with your customers as an idea to help give their consumers peace of mind. So what that means, it sounds like, oh, that might be a really expensive item, but no, tamper evident can be as simple as a white gloss label that tears, and that's the whole purpose of it. You want it to be able to tear if something has been opened. So whether that's a bottle or a package or a box, even if it's a shipping box, think about shipping products as well. And then in flexible pouches, we have things like the zipper closures and tear notches. Things along those lines are gonna also help when you're thinking about those drink mixers, making sure that's the first time it's ever been open is, is you're gonna be able to tell that with those tear notches. Things like bottleneckers, folded inserts and hang tags, of course, all other ideas of ways that you can really add that extra um, to the products as well, including like drink recipes. And then also one of my favorites is a QR code. You can put this on anything, a flyer, a package, a label, and that's gonna be a way that you can take a large amount of information but sharing it in a very, very small space. So if you don't have a lot of space, you can do that. And then my favorite thing is you can take a customer anywhere with that. You just simply scan that QR code and now you can take them to anything, a, a brand page, a landing page, an informational page, an ordering page, whatever the case is, a menu, um, anything along that line. And of course, UP, UPC barcode labels, that's going to allow the product to be purchased, which is what we want, right? Mm -hmm. And then help also if you need tracking or asset management. So just a bunch of ideas, just, I mean, we could go on forever, but really um, just a few that we wanted to touch on. And I want to get this over to Steven so he can help escalate the experience even further than what we've already shared today. Steven? Yeah, thanks, Sadie. You're welcome. When we're talking about beverage experience or beverage service and escalating the experience, our focus is on organizations like beverage distributors, hospitality venues, and restaurants with some sort of a retail presence there can certainly be an overlap with what Sadie covered. For example, a brewery or winery that has a tasting room or event space. Uh, we've broken out our discussion for today into three segments, customer acquisition, in-venue experience, and inspiring loyalty. My use of customer will refer to your print customer, 
and Shopper to identify consumer and end users. So that said, let's dive in and set the atmosphere for customer acquisition. It's not uncommon for shoppers to have a go-to for purchasing beverages, spirits, or enjoying a cocktail or zero-proof beverage. Um, it might be that local establishment or the place across town with a good happy hour. Your customer will have significant need to attract new business and make the experience of getting in the door easy and enjoyable. While looking for print customers, be sure not to forget beverage manufacturers or establishments that are featuring non-alcoholic and zero-proof options. Um, as we've talked a little bit about, that's a growing trend. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today too. So thinking about how do you help your customers generate new business? Really give it some thought. When was the last time you tried a different place? Do me a favor and really think about what drove you to make that move. Good chance there was some sort of advertising or outreach involved. We would love to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to throw them throw your answer in the box on the screen, um, and we'll review those in a little bit. Kudos to you if it was print related. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We've got some great options for product listed here. Many times businesses are looking to print organizations for insight on where to place items, what really works, or will stand out. You provide that value add to them. Yard signs can be a great way to advertise your business and help shoppers navigate. For how print can affect shopper experience, brochures can be distributed to showcase a myriad of information or a quick takeaway like a rack card can serve as both external marketing for cons consumer acquisition and for our next topic of in-venue experience. Who doesn't love when you can have a multi-purpose piece? <laughs> One to point out here is a real life example I stumbled across um, in my own backyard, quite literally. Uh, Stone's Beer and Beverage Market recently moved to my neighborhood in Philadelphia. Prior, prior to their advertising, I'd never heard of them. All of a sudden, laminated signs advertising their opening were everywhere. I couldn't really visualize where they were located and then noticed they had sandwich boards on a corner with arrows showing me where to go. Um, and as I approached, there was a sign out front with an arrow and then beautiful window decals, which you can see on the screen here. Uh, I was, they were nice enough to let me use uh, them sort of as a case study for this. So I appreciate them and at least some of the advertising that goes on with it. <laughs> the good news, I literally couldn't get lost looking for this place if I wanted to. Um, they did a really, really nice job. So also a bit of show and tell. Um, to start, I've got just the simple sway card uh, that they had. I received at a local event that Stones helped to connect shoppers with their social media. As you'll see, you've got a QR code there that directs you uh, with ways to reach them. And that's a very big um, increase we've seen really recent years of use of the QR code for that. So next, now you're in the venue. Mm. Let's help your customer make shoppers experience great. Providing clear direction is critical, even for the most seasoned shopper. Items like banners, sandwich boards, and floor decals can ensure shoppers get to where they need to or help your customer guide towards a predetermined location, perhaps their seasonal selection or a higher margin product they're trying to feature. It's important to many business owners to have clearly identifiable staff. Helping with custom apparel and name badges can ensure shoppers know who to ask for help. And then lastly, tastings and in-venue experiences are becoming increasingly popular. Touching a multi-purpose use rack card that we talked about earlier, the backside could be outlined with pairings and courses. Keep it simple and informative. You know another great option now that I think about it? You can put your brand out there with custom napkins, drinkware, and coasters. Shoppers love when items are customized. Um, and this can also help send your set your venue apart from one that uses generic collateral. These items also double as giveaways, or additional purchase options. So you've got additional revenue stream and advertising. Represents a win-win in my mind. <laughs> when I go back to Stone's Beverage Market and my visit to commend them on the use of print media, their in-store experience mirrored what we're discussing. They have clear wayfinding signage and descriptors as you walk through the store. One great example is their online order pickup sign, directing a shopper right where to go. I know we've all had at least one negative online pickup in store experience, a sign is a very, very simple way to avoid any confusion. And then for this, my show and tell uh, for their section is their great business card um, that features their QR code as well as double thick stock and a painted edge there. So really, really nice job uh, on what Stones puts out there. Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go into our last experience. How do we ensure shoppers stay engaged in returning? Your customer is now hypothetically invested all this time and money in their exterior and interior print. You don't want it to go to all waste. 
So let's help inspire some loyalty. Capturing consumer information for outreach with a postcard, perhaps for a, free, a frequent shopper event or personalized card for a birthday uh, with a special offer can keep seasonal engagement. To help loyal shoppers feel rewarded, try punch cards and or a point system. Well, what's at stake for these customers? Getting merchandise uh, is one possibility and also not to be overlooked gift cards. It's a great way to help your consumer customer attract new business uh, with the help of loyal shoppers. Going back to my time at Stones, they've got a whole wall of merchandise that can be purchased with money or points from their loyalty program. And the last piece for me to show is this great label. Uh, as you can see, it has links to all their social media as well as a die cut decal. I absolutely love this piece. Yeah, well, I bet you do too, Sadie, right? <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. I was going to start clapping for you, Steven. <laughs> Somebody's a labels cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need some pom-poms over here. <laughs> so now I'm a Loyal Stones beverage customer, thanks to their use of print media. And I hope I've inspired you in some ways to help your customer escalate their experience. Yeah. Let me turn it over to Jill, who's going to help heighten the buzz with some snazzy point of purchase. Yeah. Awesome, Stephen. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, I love hearing about that experience with Stones that you had, and um, what a great job they're doing. So I know if I come to Philly, that's what I'm going to be looking for. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to be where where's Stones? <laughs> so it's obviously really had an impact on you, and it and it shows that opportunities lie around every corner, right? Literally, every corner. Yeah. Yep. Now, you mentioned also some really great point of purchase items in your example that they use. So you know, let's take a little bit closer look at those. You know, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that point of purchase strategy, those materials that you place and that are placed in your products to increase that brand visibility and enhance that in-store experience and really ultimately influence purchasing choices. So as a quick example, a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to pick up a bottle of whiskey for my brother as a thank you gift. Um, I know zero about whiskey. Now, I'm a margarita girl. I posted that earlier. So um, I'm standing in that aisle. You know, my eyes are kind of glazing over trying to pick out a nice one. You know, what do you pick? That college kid kid at the register, you know, he really wasn't much help for me. So let me tell you, my ultimate choice was heavily influenced by the signage, really the labels, the shelf talkers, you know, any interesting artwork, those types of things really grabbed me and helped me make a decision. So got him a great bottle of whiskey. He was pretty happy with it. And um, that's an example really of how that point of purchase works um, to direct and influence when someone is ready to make that purchase. Um, you know, the implementation of the right display sets a product apart from the rest of the aisle. So, and it can really increase the retail sales by up to 20%. So that's a huge jump. So with all the brands out there that are really vying for a piece of that market share, you can imagine the opportunities that abound. We've listed here some of the best products that you can pitch for successful brand awareness, but you really have to go no further than, than paying attention to your own experiences, like the experience I had and the experience Stephen had and what influences you. So, so who do you approach then for the point of purchase? And just ask some questions and really follow that trail. Very often materials for off-sale retail establishments are supplied by the beverage distributor. But who is that distributor? Do they purchase their own materials for use or do they receive them from the manufacturer? If so, who is that? Who is that contact? So just continue to follow that trail, ask some questions. And just because the business receives much of their POP materials from their distributor does not mean that there are no other in-store opportunities. Remember how I mentioned that total experience is becoming more and more important? Alcohol retailers can create new experiences and promotions you know, month by month if they'd like, just by simply changing out their signage. Retractable banners are easy to move from place to place and floor decals and window decals can really add that graphic interest. You know, with a little bit of imagination, spaces can be created to transport customers and really enhance the entire experience in store. Uh, remember the idea that shared expense that we talked about between the owner and the distributor? You know, this is a great suggestion here as well. Shared expenses between the retailer and the distributor. They can come up with great promotions together. And really, if that's a little too difficult for, for um, that an individual business to, to front the cost, those um, uh, shared expenses work great for that. So really, it's not just about the signage either. You know, we talk a lot about signage when it comes to point of purchase, but shelf labels and shelf talkers are just as important for directing and purchasing choices, um, as well as um, they run, uh, help run an efficient business, right? You know, uh, Sadie mentioned how UPC codes and barcodes, labels, for instance, really help with that inventory control on shelves, as well as with the backstock. 
And with the growth expectations of craft spirits, if I could say it, craft spirits, it's kind of a tongue twister. Tongue twister. <laughs> it's a little bit that I mentioned earlier. Consumers will be looking to create their own experiences in their homes. So craft cocktails and mocktails um, are super popular right now. And a great way for retail stores to capitalize on that trend is to print craft drink recipes on memo pads or post-it notes. Include that shopping list with all the ingredients. Even include the aisle that those ingredients can be found in. And let me tell you, that list can be really long. Those craft cocktails have tons of ingredients. So it all encourages add-on sales. Um, and the use of um, folded carton displays um, at, the, at the counter, you know, help promote those, those trial sizes and maybe that special garnish um, you know, that you can add to that drink. So having that right point of purchase display for liquor, wine, and beer brands can really increase those conversions and it helps close that sale. If a retailer's displays aren't inspiring customers to purchase, it's time for an update and you are just the person that can get them what they need. So that's what we're gonna do today here is suggest some of those top products. Here's a list of the most popular print products that are used in the beer, wine and spirits industry. We've talked about most of them, if not all of them today, obviously the labels, the signage, displays, packaging, promotional items from anything from wearables to drinkware um, and so on, floor decals. If you're not sure where to start, these solutions are really a good jumping off point for you. So if you knew, do need some more marketing support, you know, we've got you covered there and we really have you covered on this one. So simply log into Navitor.com to access our complimentary ebooklet. I'll pop this, this open here. Give me a sec. I wanna show you this. I gotta expand my screen a little bit for you. But we will. I mean, well, I want to be sure you can see it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm making y'all dizzy now. Um, there we go. That's what I wanted. So this is from our content calendar that is on Navitor.com. It's available to you all when you log into Navitor.com. Make sure you have a login. If you don't, contact your customer service person and we can get you signed up easy as can be. And it's as simple as just clicking sign up at the top of the at the top of the page. But we have a fantastic booklet that's available and it's based um, really what we've been talking about here today. It shows uh, highlights all of the different things in the beer, wine and spirits industry. So this is available for you to download. You can share it with your customers. It is safe to do so. And it's full of great tips and tricks and all kinds of um, information for you as a bonus as well. We do offer uh, our, our industry dollop, which is kind of like a cliff notes for the industry. So we talk about the major priorities, um, the top print products, like we've mentioned just a little bit ago, um, different conversational topics and tips that you can use. So really a comprehensive set of materials for you to get started in prospecting. So many, like, you, like we said, you know, uh, in the poll at the beginning, you're either just starting or you're kind of dabbling in it, this is gonna be what you need. We also share with you where, we've where we um, got our research. So you can do some additional research on your own. And we give you some top action steps that you can take to really get started right now. So don't worry, we're gonna be sharing all of this with you. We'll be sending out an email a little bit later today that will have a, a link to this recorded session, as well as all of these materials that you'll be able to use on your own. And um, as I said, for sure, get signed up with Navitor.com. I also encourage you to sign up for our, our email blasts. Um, and take a look at our blog. That's actually another one that um, our blog is fantastic for. And right now this month, it has, um, uh, we are offering the uh, Beer, Wine and Spirits um, newsletter or blog post there as well. It's just fantastic, full of great information. So really encourage you to do that. Um, awesome. So really, you know, look at, here we are at 1030, that happy half hour is kind of over for us. And um, maybe you finish your Baileys, maybe not. Uh, maybe it was a screwdriver. I don't know, something in the morning. So hopefully um, you, you, you picked up something new today and you have um, are ready to go and get ready for prospecting and get out into that beer, wine and spirits industry. It's a fun industry and it's full of joy and full of celebration. So it's a fun one to be a part of. Um, so it looks like now our time is up and we will be staying on though for another 15 minutes or so to answer your questions. 
But if you have to go and you have to leave us, don't worry. Like I said, we'll be sharing the, the recorded version with you later today so you won't miss out on any of those Q&As that come through. Um, just watch for your email. Um, that'll be coming a little bit later. So, and as I said, remember to sign up for those newsletters. Remember to sign up for Navitor.com um, so that you'll be informed the next time we have another one of our workshops and webinars. So we really want you to join us. So until then, if we don't see you, um, cheers to you all. But um, we'll be uh, jumping right into uh, Q and A sessions right now. So, um, Stephanie, do you have anything? Is there anything available? Yes, definitely. So we have a couple of questions here. Um, one of the questions that came through was about uh, what, like, who to best contact at these locations. So whether it's a winery or maybe it's a distiller, or I mean, maybe you guys can kind of talk about a few examples there. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, I can start, you know, when we think about the, our local brewer here, um, uh, a lot of that was with the marketing person. So, I mean, we kind of, uh, that was where we started with our questioning. So that was a good um, door in to, you know, what they're doing um, and what they're needing, who they're using, that type of thing. So that's a good place to start there. If it's a small one, I mean, absolutely start with the owner because I think they are very um, involved in every aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. um, now, Stephen, what's your, what was your experience with Stones? I walked in and I just talked to the people that were at the front counter. Uh, one of them is, I guess, acting as general manager and such. So it, they were very comfortable talking about it, but didn't have any decision making power, for example, if I had tried to sell them any type of product. Um, very good at kind of giving that, but um, wasn't the person that would have done that. So in, in my experience, you usually have different decision makers depending on what's happening. So for example, with Stone, somebody that might be working on their point of purchase, that might be one type of thing. If you've got somebody that's working on the tasting portion or the in-store experience, uh, you might have a couple different contacts and asking the right questions and following kind of what we put together here today can help you uncover that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and I think that's it really. You know, it's that ask the questions, just you got to start someone, right? So you pop in, start asking questions and let it lead to another one and another one. Say, did you have any examples? Yeah, I was just everything you guys said. And I was just gonna say too, it's really I, I think looking at the size of the, the company that you're trying to, to reach out to. So it, like we said, if it's a small one, you know, 20 under employees, you, you want to go with that probably that owner, they're probably going to even possibly be right there. Otherwise, if it's someone larger, like what Joe was mentioning, you might be reaching out to somebody that's in marketing. So it's really going to depend or just simply ask the question, you know, ask who, who would I reach out to to talk about this? And, and they might be able to share that with you. So, but that's part of just really getting out and locally, just kind of expanding your reach and just reaching out to all those places. And you'll, you'll find that out through all those relationships. So. Awesome. For sure. Thank you. Um, another question uh, Amy sent in is, is there a template for bottleneckers online in template resources? Is there something out there? I was trying to find it. We have tons of templates out there, mm -hmm. but I am trying to find that one. Sadie, do you, can you, do you know where that one might be? I know we have um, templates for like all the bottles and the cans. Um, and then like that one I had shown on the screen, this one here. Um, I'm not sure. I'll, we'll have to check on that for sure and see if we do have that for the necker specifically. Okay, so Amy, we'll check on that and um, we'll provide more links then in the email that'll go out uh, this afternoon when we send out the, all the links and resources and everything there. Yeah, great question. <laughs> You're welcome, Amy. <laughs> um, another question that we get is for folks who are starting out in this industry kind of new is, is it just as simple as kind of walking in, like Stephen, like you said, and going to the front desk, or are there some really good tips that you guys might have for just getting started? I don't know, Stephen, do you have anything? My first recommendation for going into this sort of as a newbie would be try and take product that you already have experience in. Um, and so that could be if you're really good with signage, for example, talk to the venue or the business about that. If you're really good with whether it just be stationary or labels, focus in on what you do, kind of earn that trust, build that rapport, and then that will give you the ability to potentially talk on some of these other products. Because at least at that point, you've got the knowledge of that product down. Then you use some of that and you build uh, your trust. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Stephen. Uh, Amy uh, in the chat is pointing out, just go and drink there. <laughs> 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 there is something to that, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Just go make a friend. Yep. <laughs> yep. Be a customer. 
<laughs> right, right, right. That's a good idea. And actually that is a good advice because then you can kind of see, you can kind of almost do a mini audit just with your mm -hmm. eyeballs is what they're doing and what it looks like. And you know, how, how well does it like, uh, if it gets wet a little bit, you know, like what, how does the label work? How does that bottlenecker work? What are they saying yeah. on it? I think those are all good pieces to actually see what they're doing. You yeah. know, something else to piggyback on top of that. Um, you know, you think, oh, I have to go in and I have to sell, you know, as a, as a newbie going in and trying to target this market, I have to sell all of this stuff that was shared today. But like Steven said, you just, you don't have to, you can go in and just start with one thing. And one thing that we had uh, in our sample kit, we actually have this, which is a water bottle label for a signature wine. So it's just because they have bottled water, they might need a label for that. So that's something that anybody's pretty comfortable selling water bottle labels, right? So that's a in, and then you get in and then you start talking about, okay, what other promo items do they need or what other print do they need? And then, Hey, by the way, where do you get these from? You know, I see this shelf talker, or I see this carton over here, or, or have you ever thought? And like, like Stephanie mentioned, looking for those little problems. Like if you see a label that's falling off or getting wet, and then you're like, Hey, did you know we have varnishes that would help against that or laminations or whatever the problem is, try to find that, but really don't be intimidated by all these products. Cause you can just start with that one product in the door. And then I think you really take it from there. So mm -hmm. I want to add to that Sadie a little bit, just because, you know, when you get that problem, like they can actually take, you guys, I mean, folks on the phone can actually take pictures of it without even talking yeah. to that customer, bring it to you, Sadie, or anyone yeah. here, but, and then we can kind of study it, look at it and make some recommendations. So then you can go back to that customer and give very specific recommendations exactly. to make it better because you might not, you know, I mean, the folks on the phone might be or on the call here today might be really great at I don't know, business cards, maybe not as good as labels and not as comfortable, but mm -hmm. that's a good way to get started. Can you yeah, and that's really with any of these products. Yeah. Um, that's why I say don't be intimidated because the whole Navator team, the whole purpose of this is that we are here to support you, whether that be through sales tools or expertise, really that one-on-one -on -one help. You know, we had shared earlier the, well, the pouch concept. Well, this is something that not a lot of people are super uber comfortable <laughs> with. So that's something that we have templates and help and expertise. And just like Stephanie said, it's, identify the problem or the need and then come to us and we can help with what the next step should be. Yeah, for sure. And you know, something you said too, Sadie, kind of struck me too. It's like, you don't have to know everything here, right? I mean, you know, there's a lot of information and so on. And really all the, the information that we're giving you and sharing with you, like we showed that dollop, we showed, you know, this, this um, booklet, it's to um, kind of help inform you a little bit so that you can speak the language a little bit better when you go in there so that they, you know, you seem a little bit more credible. I mean, you feel a little bit more comfortable. It might not be you have to share all of this or you have to, it's just to kind of give you a little bit more confidence um, with your own knowledge when you go into a place like that. So it's kind of um, what the basis of like the dollops and so on are for, uh, just to, to help out with, with those types of things. Yeah, there's not a quiz or a test at the yeah. end. <laughs> no, one, one other point that I would bring up with that in terms of problem solving is digging for pain, especially if you do take Amy's advice there, find out what's not working for restaurants. Many times, it, for example, menus, they people don't like having to reprint it or they don't like the feel of like the synthetic paper stock. There's always something that you can offer that, to your customer that helps them solve a problem. And then that again, gives you either a, the ability to step in or then take something and you know potentially turn labels over to Sadie and keep moving your relationship and business forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We could probably talk on that for the next five hours. I know it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> a lot of There's things. So much stuff there. you can talk about on that topic. Yeah, that's I know it. I know it. Um, okay. I've got a few more questions here. Oh. One is uh, from Kimmy and she was just asking, can you share the chat with us? And so I think what she's just trying to get to is what resources are we going to be given afterwards? Jill, you want to hit that one? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we will be sharing with you um, uh, in a follow-up email, um, the presentation, the actual recorded presentation, we'll share the deck so that you've got all of that uh, available to you. If you want to repurpose anything, you are welcome to do that. We will be sharing links to the booklet that you're seeing right now, um, as well as the dollop. Um, we'll also include like a link to make sure you have access to Navator.com, our, our content calendar, where not only can you find like the beverage, you know, the beer, wine and spirits type information, but we have other industry specific 
materials that you can use as well. So we really want you to have access to that and know where you can find that. Um, we'll include a link to the blog to so um, all kinds of information and the templates. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can get those templates um, templates uh, linked out too, so that uh, you have access to to everything we talked about here today. Yep. And then a follow up question there from um, another distributor was if we have questions, um, do we just reach out to estimating via email or is there a contact email for us specifically so maybe what I might recommend there Amy is uh, to just email like when you get our emails for this webinar respond there because that's a we'll get it and then we'll get it to the right person for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm for follow-up. Um, customer yep. service should be able to help with a lot of things as well. If you have your, your uh, standard customer service person, they're they're um, really great about, um, and, and if, if they can't have the, you know, they'll they'll reach out to us as well um, and get it for you. So um, we'll be sure to get, get you the help and the information you need. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. And we'll also add those estimating email addresses into the email that you get this afternoon. So we can add that in as more resources. Mm -hmm. Everything's online too. So we, we don't want you to feel like you only get this email, but <laughs> we can definitely yeah. make it really easier today. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We'll get you. Yeah. You know, really that, that uh, conduit for a lot of this information is Navator.com. So if you don't have a login there, that's the first place to start, honestly, um, so that you can uh, access all this information. Perfect. Ooh. Okay. And another question then is um, from Bill and where to research wineries, owner names, locations, that kind of a thing. So I think everyone's probably going to have a similar answer, but uh, Stephen, maybe you want to start? Yeah. The first place I would start is Better Business Bureau. You can search winery, for example, and I, I looked up my zip code and there's 102 within whatever distance it's categorized in there. You, you click in on it, it's going to have contact information for it, uh, the website, and you can do some research that way. Another very, very good option is your local chamber of commerce. Mm -hmm. If you've got that, most have di directories online, um, or at least you can ability to begin networking and, and talking, even if you want to at that chamber of commerce and say, you know, hey, who is really part of this? Who do you really see in this space? And you can use them for both getting contact information and then also an introduction um, if you're willing to take them up on that. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, great idea, Stephen. Okay, Sadie, do you have any suggestions? Well, I did until Stephen took him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just walk, just exactly. walk down the block, right? <laughs> I mean, just, just walk down the block. <laughs> exactly what he said. I was going to say Chamber of Commerce is always a big one. It's uh, The Chamber of Commerce is a huge resource that people, I think, often forget about. Absolutely. Uh, you go on there. You can go by industry. You, you know, you're going to have the whole thing. The other thing is take a look at social media in your area. You're going to see new things opening that way. You're going to see events that are happening. Um, you know, you had asked about the owner's names and things. Oftentimes, if you go to like, say a Facebook page of, uh, of a business, maybe they're opening like say Stones, for example, when they were reopening, when they were just first opening, you might be able to look and dig into that and be able to find out contacts through that or pictures with owners mentioned, you know, all these little ways of kind of being a little um, investigator, I guess you could say, but yeah, exactly what what Stephen said is, is going to be your great option. And and Google is your friend. Google. I was going to say, yeah. you know, Google, Google, Google you know, is wine, better, right? Yeah, yeah, they're going to come up that way too. So really, it, it's it's you, you'll have plenty and plenty of things through those resources. So. It's amazing how many small little local wineries and breweries and craft yeah. places. Um, and it's interesting too, I have some kids that work in the industry um, with you know, craft drinks and so on. And sometimes you'll see manufacturers jumping into the service industry as well. My yeah. son, um, my son-in-law works in, is in, lives in Milwaukee and there's a company called Bitter Cube that does just the bitters. So it's not the alcohol itself, but the bitters that you add to the drinks, but they've started, they've just opened bars and speakeasies. So, I mean, kind of, if you have an in, uh, you know, that the opportunities can be um, limitless with some of these. So, um, you know, look for some things like that. People who are starting something new, a pop-up location, they got a pop-up bar, a pop-up experience, you know, just kind of keep your eyes open to what's happening in your area. And um, I think, you know, lots of things will, will um, reveal themselves to you. And um, we had a suggestion in the comments as well is to join the local bar and tavern association oh. as an associate member and that you often get access to their member list there. So um, this is coming from uh, someone who's done quite well in this area in the last few years. So um, thank you for sharing those suggestions as well. Um, sounds good. <laughs> Bill, you want us to come with you on a sales call? I don't know. Are, are you buying or what? <laughs> are you buying? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but we do actually do that, right? Um, we do yes, assist. Yes, we can. Um, not, not the <laughs> Uh, but we do actually assist, assist um, in that kind of a sale. So, uh, Steve and Sadie, you're on notice here. Bill, we'll yeah, doing? we are. Yeah, that definitely is something. I mean, um, we have done um, co-oping, you know, you know, on calls with with the end customers, pretending, you know, we don't have to be Navator. Obviously, we are only wholesale. We are only we only sell to to the trade. So, um, you know, we can always be part of your sales organization. Uh, yeah, something like that. On a call. Something, something I'll throw in along that line. You know, we've been talking a lot about digital tools and online stuff, but remember someone had asked way up in the chat at the beginning about physical samples and things. And we do mm -hmm. have yes. like here's sample kits that are for yep. the beer, wine and spirits and wine. Just, this yep. is just labels. You know, I happen to have a few of those around here. Yep. Um, but it really there's a whole, Navator offers a lot of things like that too. So to help on those sales calls, um, to kind of take us with you in a, in a sort of way, Bill. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you guys are actually at time. I did pop up some of the answers everybody gave about what encouraged you to try. So hopefully you had a chance to take a look at those. Um, some interesting things there, great designs, eye-catching logos, you know, all of that, you know, inviting signage, just some really great um, ideas there and some ways to remind you to where to keep your eyes open and, and how to look for, for those opportunities. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed today. It's kind of a fun topic. You know, we had a little fun with it as well. So we're so glad you, you were able to join us and and uh, we appreciate the time you spent with us. So um, until next time, um, everybody, please though do, you will get a, a survey at the end of this uh, webinar when it closes out. So we really encourage you to fill that out and give us any information you have. If there's anything else you'd like to see for future webinars, um, please let us know because we are, we're, we're here for you and we're here to help you grow your sales. That's our job. So um, have a great day. Have a wonderful fall. And um, we'll all see y'all soon. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks. you so much. Cheers.